Hello and welcome, it's me Nathan with another Grand Stream tutorial. In today's video we're going to be talking about email settings on the UCM. Now for me this is one of the most crucial settings that you can configure, especially when you're doing a fresh install on a PBX, because without setting up the email you lose out on a lot of functions. One of them is voicemail to email for extensions or any other voicemail to email function that also works in a subcategory of extensions like voicemail group extensions and so on. You also have the privilege of taking advantage of fax to email, as well as email to fax settings on our PBX, which comes in handy. If you want to have email notification for system logs, this is once again a crucial function that needs to be set up after you configure the email settings on your system. Um, but above all else, you cannot reset your password if you don't do this. So if you're looking for that uh, line of safety for a password reset function on our PBX, that is a no-go unless you configure your email settings on the PBX. Now I know you may be wondering, why do we have to do this on the PBX? Put simply, if you don't do this, our PBX won't be able to use a given email account so it can send emails. Now, it's not necessary for you to actually have a separate email account in order for our PBX to send emails. Uh, doing this is called MTA and this is relying upon the UCM's built-in email function to actually send an outgoing email. The problem with this is that for most email providers, an email coming from the MTA function looks malicious and will oftentimes be blocked. So my favorite method is just using a Gmail account, uh, configuring that sub account onto our PBX so that we can use that sub account to actually send those emails for our PBX. So with that being said, let's go ahead and set up our email account. Um, for the setup, I will be using Gmail. So you'll learn how to do all the Gmail ports and settings. Now with every different email provider, um, whether it's Gmail or Office 365, they may all have different ports and different settings to them, but at least you could use Gmail as a good example. And just seeing how that this is done, it will also help you on other email services that you may not know how to configure. So with that being said, let's go ahead to System Settings. We're gonna click on email settings. And as you can see, it's in the default, the MTA type, which may or may not work. However, I'm just gonna go with what I know works. So I'm gonna use a client. Now for Gmail, I will be using TLS and having that enabled because it is required by Gmail. Um, in the email format, you can do either HTML or in plain text. That's up to you, it should work either way. For email server, you will be using SMTP dot gmail dot com with this though you also have to add the port now if you're ever now if you if you ever find yourself in a situation where you don't know what parameters to use when setting this up you can always go into google search and type up gmail sending email settings And as you can see, since we're using TLS, we're gonna be using port 587. Got that right off on the first page, so let's go ahead and put 587 in there. Next, we're gonna be putting in a username. As for my username, I already have one set up for this account. There we go, that's my username. Now this is an actual email account I could log into on my own and actually use. This is the same thing that our PBX is gonna to use to send that email. Now, I'm gonna put in the password for this account. So let me go ahead and add that. Now, if you wanna permit email to fax, you will have to have this enabled. This will allow our PBX to receive a direct email and actually send that over to fax but obviously uh, you will have to do some uh, blacklist and whitelist now if you don't want to do that you can leave it disabled here um, but just be aware uh, you will have to whitelist those emails if you are going to be using the whitelist next we're going to go ahead and fill out the pop and pop 3 server settings for gmail same thing always rely upon google search gmail pop slash pop3 settings. I think it's something pretty simple as well, but you always want to check and double check to be sure. So as we can see, it's pop.gmail.com and port's going to be 995. So let's go ahead and add that to our system. 
pop.gmail.com colon 995. Oops, I'm sorry. We're going to actually add that below. So unlike the SMTP server option, we'll add that right here, 995. Now another thing that you can get caught up on is if you have a different sender name than your actual username, uh, some email services might not like that or allow that. It does look slightly malicious, but there is a way to allow that to have a different header. It will be on your Gmail settings. But beyond that, we're going to go ahead and hit save. Apply changes. Now let's go ahead and hit the test button. I'm going to go ahead and add a email address so I can verify that this is working. Now we will have to wait for this portion because it does kind of take a little bit. Just make sure that you refresh the page from time to time and uh, go back to that email send log and you'll actually see if you get a deferred message. So uh, as you can see, the email that I had just tested right now, I ended up getting a deferred message and it's uh, 535 5.7.8. Now I'm very familiar with that message. Um, and this is part of why I'm showing you this tutorial because it's one of the most common things that I have come up with a lot of the client email setups and that's not allowing third-party devices to send email. Now in order to make this change it will be on the email client side so I will have to log in with this username and then make this setting change. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and open up a new tab. Uh, from there we're actually going to edit our Gmail account and uh, right now I'm using my company's Gmail account. So I'm going to switch over to the account. This is important uh, to the one that we have the UCM set up on. So that's going to be that uh, uh, Sharps UCM 1991 PBX. Now that I'm uh, logged in with that PBX, I'm going to go ahead and click on the icon and click on manage your Google account. From there, I'm going to click on security. I'm going to scroll down until I find less secure apps access. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn this on. And what this will do is will allow that UCM to access this account to send those emails. Without doing this, it will not work. So with this enabled, let's go ahead and go back to the UCM and now test. So let's go to the bottom of the page, send to the email. Now I did uh, clear out some of the other emails so I didn't have to blur them off screen uh, just so we can have a little clean slate here uh, but I'm going to send it to the same email all right and if everything is done correct we should see a 250 send so let's go ahead and hit test now obviously it's going to take a little bit of time we're gonna have to wait on it just keep refreshing the page or you can go ahead and move back from one page to the other All right, and as you can see, we got the return code of 250. That means it is now successful. Um, and this is how you officially set up email. Now, if you had just barely enabled the allow third parties to send uh, emails with your email account, and you did that right away while running a test, you, there is a chance that you can still get a deferred message. You just might have to give it a little time before it's recognized on Gmail's end that it's okay to do that. Uh, but with that being said, now that this is all set up, uh, you should be able to use this to reference any other uh, Gmail accounts you would like to use with our UCM. And this can also be a good reference guide for any other email services of your choice. But now that you know how to set up the email on the UCM, you are free to enjoy all the other cool features that come with it, like voicemail to email, fax to email, and all the other great stuff that we do have on this PBX. Um, but with that being said, uh, my name is Nathan Sharp, and you have a good one. We hope that you found that video tutorial helpful, and if you did, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel for the latest in video tutorials. I'm Nathan Sharp. You have a good one.